Poke Effect. Michael here. Look at my shirt. It's so clever. Oh my god, so funny. Ha 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 ha. I'm in college now, but back in high school I had a knack for physics class. I understood and liked it, and as a result of that, it was my best class all throughout high school. It even inspired me to choose mechanical engineering as my major in college. So thanks to the suggestion of my good friend Paul. Oh. I decided to use my physics knowledge and apply it to some Pokemon, analyzing some of the strange physics about them. Now, keep in mind that my knowledge of physics isn't extremely advanced, so don't expect any super high-tech calculations. Also, I'll have to make a fair amount of assumptions and estimations since my subjects are... I don't know, FICTIONAL! So, if you want to learn a little bit about physics with some Pokemon thrown in the mix, without further ado, I give you the first strange Pokemon physics Pokemon. Machamp. Machamp is a fighting-type Pokemon introduced in the first generation. Weighing in at close to 300 pounds, but only being 5 foot 3 inches tall, means it's a solid mass of muscle. Its Pokemon Y Pokedex data states, it uses its four powerful arms to pin the limbs of its foe, then throws the victim over the horizon. Many of its other dex entries talk about it either throwing or punching a victim over the horizon. Hmm. Over the horizon, huh? Sounds impressive. What kind of force would be required to do that? In other words, Exactly how hard can Machamp punch? First we need to know how far the horizon actually is. There are two formulas for calculating this, depending on whether you want metric or imperial units. To calculate this, we need the vantage point height, which in this case would be Machamp's eyes. I estimated that this would be about 2 inches below the top of his head, so about 5 foot 1 or 1.44 meters. Plugging those values into the equation gives us a horizon distance of about 4.44 kilometers, or 2.75 miles. That's almost the distance of a cross-country race. Now in order to find the force needed to send a victim, let's say it's me, this distance, we need to know the victim's initial velocity. We can find this using the projectile motion distance formula, where d is the distance, v0 is the initial velocity, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and theta is the angle at which the victim was initially launched. This formula ignores air resistance, which I'm doing as well for simplicity's sake. Rearranging the formula allows us to solve for the velocity, so by plugging in the metric values, since I like calculating with those more, and 45 for the angle, since 45 degrees is the angle that will get you the most range with the same force, we get a value of 208.6 meters per second, or 466.6 miles per hour for the initial velocity. That's more than twice the speed of an arrow launched from a compound bow. To find the force needed to accelerate the victim to such an absurd velocity in such a small distance, we'll use Newton's second law equation. We have my mass, which is about 165 pounds or 74.8 kilograms, but we need the acceleration. To find that, we use this kinematics equation, assuming zero is the initial velocity and a distance of about one meter. Doing some rearranging and plugging in, we get an acceleration of 21,756 meters per second squared. Plugging this into F equals MA with my mass, we get a force of 1,630,000 newtons, equal to around 365,800 pounds. Talk about your left hook. Now the strange thing about this force is that it wouldn't punch me over the horizon. It would just punch right through me. And even if I was wearing some kind of magical impenetrable vest, or he just threw me instead, it would still kill me, thanks to the G-force. G-force is a measure of acceleration that indirectly causes weight, and one G is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. So if you're currently sitting in front of your computer, you're experiencing one G. 50 to 75 Gs will result in serious injury and possibly death, and the most Gs ever survived by a human was 214. We can find how many g's I'm experiencing by dividing our acceleration value by the acceleration due to gravity. So how many g's would I experience? 2,220. I would be ripped apart. Real bad. So in the end, any of Machamp's punches would punch right through any human, and any of his throws would rip any human apart. Huh. No wonder fighting's super effective on normal. So there we have it, the first entry into strange Pokemon physics. What did you think of this video? Do you want to see more? What Pokemon do you want to see on strange Pokemon physics in the future? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, Pokefans, gotta catch them all!